If you remember sniping Death Eaters from a distance, fighting giants as Professor McGonagall, and planting explosives as Seamus Finnegan, then you grew up playing Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. But which one? Because there were three completely different versions released across six platforms and in this video we're going to compare each of them. And so we reach the final installment of the series. A decade of tie-in games across three console generations comes to an end with the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Now Part 1 was a pretty big disappointment. With its repetitive shooter gameplay, boring sneaking levels and an overabundance of filler quests, Part 1 is seen by many as the low point of the series. So will the sequel redeem the franchise and give the series the send off it deserves or will this be another subpar tie-in game? Well we're about to find out. But before we start please make sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to need your help to rank all of these Harry Potter games. Ok back to the Deathly Hallows. As always we begin with the flagship version released for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC. We open with a cutscene of Wizard Hitler grave robbing his old school teacher. You know, typical kids game stuff. We then cut to Diagon Alley where we see some familiar faces. No, not the trio, I'm talking about these character models they kept reusing from the first game. Geez, I know the wizard community is small, but talk about mixing the bloodlines. Our heroes then end up in the minds of Moria. Come on Hermione, don't you remember? Speak friend to enter. So remember last time how I joked that they made Harry look middle aged? Well, it's even worse in this game. Look, they even gave him a dad bod. This is the oldest 17 year old I've ever seen. Also, in the previous games Ron and Hermione just stood there and waited for you to move, like good well behaved NPCs. But this time around they just bolt ahead for some reason. Maybe Ron just doesn't want to take another bench to the head. Oh no, it's the cave police. Minimal wage cave police by the looks of it. So yes, this game is very much a follow up to part 1, a third person shooter with cover mechanics similar to Gears of War and GTA 4. However, the shooting mechanics have been refined. The weapon wheel is gone, with the spells now being mapped directly onto the face buttons. The cover mechanics are a bit more intuitive and Harry just generally moves better. The spells themselves are a bit more fun to use than last time, but don't get me wrong, they're still very much just different types of guns. We've got the pistol, the machine gun, the shotgun, the homing missile, and my favourite, the sniper rifle. You know, I never thought I'd be sniping Gringotts bank guards in the balls in a Harry Potter game. This level pretty much acts as a tutorial and ends with the trio taking on the dragon. Bull shit. Okay, next up Hogsmeade. Um, Hermione, little help, I kind of forgot how to open gate. Thanks. The enemies apparate away after you've beaten them, I guess to prevent Harry from teabagging them. Oh no, Ron and Hermione are dead! What am I ever gonna do? What am I- Oh no, no, wait, they're alive. So after making their way through hordes of generic Death Eaters, the trio sneak into Hogwarts and confront Headmaster Snape with his 80s metal hairdo. But instead of Snape, we actually end up taking on uh, David Brent's friend from uh, the UK office. Okay, uh, what's next? Wait, hold on, you actually get to play as McGonagall? And she has a shotgun spell? Incredible. So the next level has you playing as Hermione in the Chamber of Secrets. It's kind of a twist on an escort mission. Technically Ron is the one escorting you, but you've got to protect him from the spiders while he finds the right way to the chamber. This level takes forever to get through, but at least at the end you get to see the Chamber of Secrets. Wow, what a difference a decade makes. And look, every time they destroy destroy a horcrux, Voldemort gets a terrible neck cramp. So this level actually ends with a Crash Bandicoot stage. And your reward is having to snog Ron. Yeah, I think I'd rather take the boxes to the head instead. Alright, what's next? What? Seamus? You get to play as Seamus Finnegan, the Yamcha of Harry Potter? That's right, so in this level Seamus has to go around planting C4 explosives, uh, sorry I mean magical charges around the main bridge. And also you get to play as Neville who provides cover fire. Okay, so then we get to play as McGonagall again, this time she takes on a giant. This is followed by the trio looking for Ravenclaw's diadem in the Room of Requirements, while occasionally being ambushed by Malfoy. This looks exactly like my nan's loft. We then get this really long level where you've got to make your way through the castle battling Death Eaters. This level is kind of tedious, but at least we're technically back at Hogwarts. They are actually reusing the castle from the 5th and 6th game, but this time they've added a bit of damage. 
Something to note is that Harry still can't jump. He forgot how to do that after the third year, but he can apparate now. It's a cool mechanic, but I didn't really find it that useful, mainly because you usually just end up teleporting into the middle of a pack of Death Eaters, which is why I mainly used it to retreat when I was low on health. I love the uh, variety of enemies in this game. So you get these huge Death Eaters all decked out in dark wizard stuff. And then there's this guy that just looks like a software developer who death eats on the weekend. Uh, alright, where's that sniper? Damn it, Harry, your hair's in the way! Okay, so we get some plot, uh, Snape gets his redemption, and Harry finds out he's actually a horcrux. Harry then decides to confront Voldemort in the forest. Okay, so is this entire level just going to be Harry walking into the forest while sad music plays? You know, a reflective moment like when Snake crawled through the microwave in MGS4. Of course not, what game do you think this is? Harry will need to take on an army of Death Eaters who are trying to kill him just to reach Voldemort so then he can kill him. And for some reason at this point the game starts doing slow motion death animations like in Sniper Elite. Yep, that's the exact reaction I have when I get jinxed in the dick. Ah, Jesus, just look at all this damage. Oh look, they didn't touch the greenhouse at all. Okay, to be fair, after you make it past the bridge, the Death Eaters realize what Harry's doing and stand down. And then you do get the sad moments as Harry meets all of his deceased loved ones. Look, it's a touching bit from the movie, but I just wish they let Harry sprint through this section because it kind of drags on. Also, they uh, took away Harry's wand, but forgot to change the animation. Uh, you see, they missed a good opportunity here. They should have had a level where Harry and Dumbledore shoot their way out of the platform. Instead, we just go back to the castle. Right, so we're at the final part of the game where you have to take on Voldemort like 20 times. First, you do it in the courtyard. Then we get another chase where Harry has to shoot random objects to uh, slow down Voldemort's dark fart cloud. This is followed by the Weasley medley. We've got Ron looking for Nagini, Ginny single-handedly holding off a thousand Death Eaters, and Mrs. Weasley fighting Bellatrix. Come on, enough of this one bullshit Molly, just slap her. Back to Harry now, who's spamming Voldemort with every spell in the book. And then finally, we get the beam struggle. I'll be honest, this part is a bit underwhelming. Look, you just have to move it around from side to side. I think they really missed a trick here. They should have implemented the old beam struggle from the Budokai games, where you have to frantically spam the analog sticks. And that's it. There is a really nice part after the credits where Harry dips his face in the pensieve and you get a montage of all the games in the series. So overall this version is definitely an improvement over part 1. No more invisibility cloak missions, no more random filler tasks and no more generic London bloke. I've seen a picture of it. I've never seen anyone do it myself. This game still has a few slow levels and the action does get repetitive, but it's nowhere near as bad as part one. There is a Wii version and just like part one, it's near identical to the flagships apart from a dip in graphics and the shooting controls being mapped onto the Wiimote. All right, let's move on to the handhelds. Well, there's only one, it's the Nintendo DS game. And just like the console version, this one starts with Voldemort grave robbing. And straight away you can tell the game's received a bump in graphics compared to the last one. It probably helps that this one was released at the very tail end of the console's life cycle. In fact, the 3DS was already out when this game was released. The gameplay is very similar to part one, but there is a greater emphasis on the puzzles. It kind of reminds me of the Nintendo DS Zelda games. Each level is like a dungeon, which you navigate by solving puzzles with different spells and taking on enemies. You've got to uh, trace around these shapes to perform spells, which is a nice nod back to the first PC game. But my favorite thing about this game is all the wacky cutscenes, like this one of Bellatrix getting absolutely pancaked by the chandelier. Also, who remembers Ron and Hermione being attacked by the master hand from Smash Bros? And for some reason, Harry is dressed just like Fred from the Scooby-Doo movie. I do like this part at the end where everyone's celebrating after the battle and then there's Malfoy like, yeah, sorry I tried to kill you, Potter. So that's the handheld game. All in all, it's better than part one, which itself was a decent game. I've got to say though, the uh, dungeon and puzzle structure did get a bit repetitive for me towards the end. 
And finally, we move on to the mobile version. Similar to part one, this game consists of Harry going from level to level, shooting spells at spiders and death eaters. And this isn't a glorified mini game like some of the older mobile versions. There are a total of eight levels and they pretty much cover the entire movie. Fun fact, this is the only version that actually has a platform nine and three quarters level after Harry dies. And just like the last three games, the mobile version does have different versions depending on your phone's spec. And so there you have it, every version of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. I was glad to see the flagship games were an improvement over the first part. Yes, it's still just an average third person shooter with wands, but I really like the inclusion of these random characters like McGonagall and Seamus and Mrs. Weasley, and they did a decent job making the game look like the movie. The Nintendo DS game was also a pretty good Zelda clone, which kind of brings things full circle as the early games had a big Zelda influence. Overall, these games probably weren't the high point the fans were hoping the series would go out on, but they're not the worst games in the series. Which leads me to a question. What is the worst game in the franchise? And more importantly, what's the best Harry Potter game? In this series, I've compared a total of 25 different Harry Potter games, so I think it's only right that we rank all of them. And this is where I need your help. So I've started a poll, link in the description, where you can vote for your favourite Harry Potter game. And once every everyone's had a chance to vote, I'm going to do a video ranking all of the games, from best to worst, based on your votes. That way we can find out the fandom's favourite Harry Potter game. I've decided to split it into two categories, consoles and handhelds. I just think it'll be a bit fairer that way. So this first poll is going to be just for the console games. Once we rank those, we can move on to the handhelds. So please get voting, but also make sure to leave a comment and let me know which is your favourite and least favourite Harry Potter game and why. I'll be featuring some of the comments in the rankings videos. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.